Yeah, Flo, uh, what do you guys got to do better than the last game, uh, I guess, especially defensively? Uh, I mean, we've got to do everything better. Um, just felt like the last game, our focus was on point and also making a lot of crucial errors on the, on the offense side, you know, having, what is it, 16 turnovers in the half is basically unacceptable because there's no defense for that. So, I mean, primarily, obviously, on offense, we got to take care of the ball. And secondly, on defense, we just got to apply all the principles we've, you know, we've learned throughout the summer. And uh, you've played Gonzaga before. What do you expect from them when, when you play them? I mean, I expect the same thing. You know, a very talented team that has the ability to shoot and also score inside. And obviously, our goal is just, you know, to kind of like slow them down and try to take some of the actions away. Yeah. Thanks. All right, now let's go to Kendall. Uh, Flo, and getting kind of ready for this game, did you all focus more on some improvements after the Marquette game, or did you all kind of turn to Gonzaga immediately after Tuesday's game? Um, we didn't focus too much on Marquette, uh, primarily because the, game's already, the game was already played. You know, we got to have the mindset of moving on to the next game. But obviously, we picked back a lot of the stuff in the Marquette game to where the, the certain areas where we made mistakes on and and where we try to fix certain things because obviously we're going to play different teams. We might play the same style and do kind of the same things that Marquette did. But uh, I mean, as far as as far as it goes, we didn't ponder on it too long. We just moved on to the next the next thing. All right, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, Flo. Um, how would you assess kind of you and some of the other forwards' play so far? Where do y'all need to improve down there on the block? Um. I mean, I don't know. I mean, for the most part, uh, I would say more so when I look at uh, when I look at Jalen and Caleb, more so just you know being strong with the ball, taking care of the ball, and also just getting easy baskets. You know, because there was a few times, especially like against Marquette, where we lost the ball and not having not having strong handles, and also just catching the ball and you know making uh, easy finishing layups. So as far as the forwards go, you know, just trying to make the game simple, you know, and once you make the game simple, scoring size, what it does, it shrinks the defense and allows shooters to get open. So, yeah. Parker, go ahead. Okay, do you want to split these up? Well, uh, obviously a quick turnaround when it comes to uh, bouncing back from Marquette to Gonzaga. How do you guys go about doing that and kind of flipping that switch of we're not focusing on Marquette anymore, we just got to put that put that aside? Um, and I feel like we did a good job of it, especially the past two days of practice. Um, I mean, having some veterans on the team, you know, kind of <clears throat> trying to challenge the guys to try to move forward and what it is to not ponder on the loss, primarily because it can affect the projection of how this how the season continues to go. So, I mean, the reality is we know how how much of a long season it is. So, you know, it's going to be a next matchup. You know, we can't focus too much on the loss, and especially considering the next matchup is a big game as such. So we just got to make sure we come in, you know, have a have an attitude to just play harder, be more physical, be more aggressive, and take care of business. Any other questions for Flo? Use the raise hand if you have one. Uh, Scott, what uh, what y'all? What? Hey, no questions been... about Marquette. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess obviously the goal is to improve defensively. Yeah. What, have, what have y'all been focus, focusing on there? Yeah, right there, defense. So uh, uh, still analytically the second best offense in the country, even after you have 16 turnovers in the first half and you, you're down 24-0 in points off turnovers. And uh, that was really uncharacteristic of this team. I mean, this uh, analytically has probably been one of the best teams at taking care of the basketball by far and away. So uh, really surprised by the first half that snowballed on us, but the consistent thing was defensively first and second half. We weren't very good, even when we weren't turning it over and take those live ball tournament tur turnovers and easy buckets out. Our, our regular half court defense wasn't very good. And uh, just being on the road, first true road game. I mean, that, that's got to be something different because in a lot of these road games, you, you usually see the, the home team winning in these non-conference games. I think if you probably did a study over uh, uh, the last five years, take out the COVID stuff, um, but you, you, that first road game, uh, uh, unless you have a real veteran team, 
it's uh, 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 twice as hard as normal. And it's just uh, uh, it's first time you're facing a packed house. Um, first time you uh, things can snowball on you quick. Uh, and, and as a coach, you, you try to prepare your team and you think you're ready. But obviously, I didn't do a good enough job uh, last game. And hopefully, I'll do better uh, for the guys this game. Thanks, Scott. All right, let's go to Josh Criswell from the Houston Chronicle. Hi, Scott. How's it going? Good to meet you. How you doing, Josh? Hey, um, you know, you know, with you guys at number six, UH number one, Texas number two, and some, you know, solid success from the mid-majors in the state, just like I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on the the overall college basketball landscape yeah. in Texas and how you've just kind of seen it evolve over the past two decades. Well, it, it, it's, it starts with uh, um, great AU and high school coaches and uh, the athletic period, the facilities and money they put in uh, to make sure uh, the high school student athletes in Texas have uh, a chance to reach their, reach their full potential. And uh, when you have so many talented players uh, that then choose to stay in the state and play for teams in the state, um, literally, uh, I mean, you could have five teams in the top 25 from the state. I mean, Texas Tech's been ranked. Uh, TCU has been ranked Texas, Houston, us, that's five. And then you could have several more that, like you said, that are, that are knocking. So uh, I think uh, it, it'll come to the point where we've had us in Houston in the final four. Maybe one day you get to three Texas schools in a final four. All right, let's go to Andrew Miner. Coach, you kind of mentioned veteran, uh, you need a veteran team on the road. I was just curious, um, your team's a little bit of a mix with some new guys, some young guys. Uh, do you think the team at all was looking ahead to the game against Gonzaga this Friday? Uh, did that affect the performance against Marquette at all? No, I think I think Marquette was really good, and we were uh, average at best, and uh, that 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 sums it up right there. So, uh, and and they showed. Uh, uh, I mean, take out the turnovers and the 24 points still defensively. We're not where we need to be. So uh, I think uh, you play games like this, you figure out weaknesses, you get better at them. <laughs> Hopefully uh, the rest of your season, you're better off because of it because you rather learn this now than uh, on the road playing a Big 12 team. And that defense is travel. I mean, uh, offensively, we scored 45 points in the second half, only had four turnovers. But the defense uh, didn't show up either half. And you mentioned snowballing. That kind of happened against Virginia as, as well. What's the key to making sure things don't snowball for such long periods of time moving forward? Yeah, that's a great question, too. Uh, um, first thing after Virginia was I thought, you know, we got to call more timeouts and try to let things not spiral as quick. Uh, and um, first thing after the game, could we have called another one or two in that area? And uh, that's one thing. Um, but I think uh, uh, the other thing is is – when you get better defensively, you get better rebounding the ball. Now you're able to overcome when you're missing shots. Um, you're able to get stops, maybe get transition, get a couple easy ones, get a couple second chance, and those end momentum just as easily. So uh, I, I, I'd, I'd be surprised if the turnovers continue. Uh, I think that was a one-half anomaly for us. Um, but the defense has got to get better. The rebounding has got to get better, and that that travels. Thank you, Coach. All right, let's go to Kendall Cow. Uh, Scott, when we kind of dig into the defense, I know you all certainly have um, over the last several weeks. Do you all feel like it's schematic changes that need to happen? Do you feel like it's kind of staying the course and guys doing well? Sort of how have you all balanced that as you've delved into it? Good question, too. Uh, um, after this last game, I think uh, uh, scheme-wise, we, we, we've tried to tighten up our defense and not get as extended and try to do a, a better job uh, um helping each other uh, i think we're leaving defenders on an island and and that that wasn't working for us and uh hopefully that change and then i think uh each and every game you play hopefully you get better at uh, um handling crowds emotion adrenaline um because sometimes you have good habits in practice but it is a different feeling different level on the court uh, especially hostile environments. And um, they use that word, it's uncharacteristic of us, but like you, you just want to have the same habits from practice to uh, last five minutes of the game to sell out crowds on the road. I mean, uh, you, what you do, you got to do all the time.
so we, we will change the scheme a little bit, tighten things up, hopefully uh, uh, be more ourselves uh, and have those habits from practice carry over to games. All right, Parker, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Uh, first off, my my stepdad's a huge Marquette fan, so he was sending me some uh, some videos. Yeah, hey, I'm sorry about game. that. Yeah, that's all right. I, I handled it. Um, okay. But uh, – <clears throat> I just wanted to ask during the broadcast it they panned over to you a couple times during that second half and it seemed like you were just kind of thinking over things what was going through your head during those runs was it just kind of helplessness like you you kind of didn't feel like you guys could climb out of that or or what was going on uh it, i mean uh your 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 first half you make some adjustments halftime you talk about things and then uh i thought offensively we did a great job I thought defensively, the things we talked about, we didn't fix. So the good thing is we've had a couple of days film, practice, schematically tighten things up more. Hopefully that helps. Um, so, but I think it's, it, it was, I mean, we scored, but they scored. So in, in the things that bothered us in the first half, bothered us in the second half. So that, that you just analyze how can you, how can you how can you fix it? And during the course of a game, it's hard to fix it because you don't have practice time. All right, let's go to Michael Haig from the Lariat. Hey, Scott. Uh, Flo kind of said that Caleb and uh, Jalen are not being real strong with the ball. That's something to work on. How would you assess those two guys as as, as their forward play so far? I think uh, uh, both of them had moments where they've been really good and productive and uh, at the same time, both of them uh, have looked like, like guys in a program for the first time and adapting to stuff. And uh, it, it, it's tough, like you use Jalen, for instance, and a lot of our defensive principles are completely different than what he's done. So it, that just that takes time to get used to. And uh, some people are, are, are quick to pick up things. Others are, are more habit driven, which take more reps. Uh, I, I think. Uh, uh, at the same time, um, both of them have, have been great to coach. They really want to learn. They want to improve. Uh, both of them have a lot of talent, and both of them will continue to get better as they can play more and think less. And at the same time, uh, the game slows down for you when you're able to uh, just play out of habits rather than trying to constantly think and analyze. Kendall, do you have another question? You know what, it was Scrub City by me not putting my hand down, but now I'll ask one anyway. Uh, Scott, in those kind of first three games, when you're playing such different teams, you try and assess like offense or defense, how do you kind of factor in what you think is an anomaly and what you think is maybe a real takeaway going forward for your team? Yeah, that, that that's another tough thing. Uh, like you, you take a Marquette team that has a center that's 24 assists, seven turnovers, second in assists and it's a four out team and then you got you got a, a six ten center being a point guard so you're not facing that night in and night out in division one so like uh virginia runs a mover blocker system that that's the only team we'll face all year that does that uh, so uh you got to prepare for the season but you also have to prepare uniquely for individual games and that that's tough when you have a newer team because you're trying to get your habits established then you're saying okay wait you know forget that this game we're going to do this this game or we're going to work on this this game which i mean we don't work on a lot of screening action because we switch a lot and not many people set a lot of screens it's mostly ball screens or five man pin downs and that's it so uh, again, uh, you try to prepare for, for each and every game, but those habits aren't formed in a one or two day scout. And the big picture is what are you going to face throughout the year, 95% of the time and in conference, and you try to get ready for that. Uh, you faced Gonzaga before. Uh, does this team look similar at all to the one in 21 or do they look much different? Uh, similar in the sense of, uh, their lead of transition and, um, you know, they have, you know, certain guys that have came back, but um, it's definitely a different team, a team that, you know, we know if we're not locked in defensively, they can pick us apart being that they are the number one offense team in the country. So uh, we're definitely, you know, trying to be pinpoint sharp, ready to play and, you know, ready to compete. And what do you see from Timmy? He, he's obviously a, a veteran. Uh, yes, he's, he's a force. You know, at the end of the day, he uh, finishes really well around the rim, has a uh, great footwork. 
And um, he's not a guy that, you know, you can guard individually. Uh, we have to be, you know, connected out there team-wise and uh, flying around and doing whatever we can to, you know, make it hard for him. Okay. Thanks, Adam. Michael Haig for the Larry. Go ahead. Yeah, Adam. Um, Flo kind of talked about how Caleb and Jalen maybe need to be stronger with the ball. Um, <clears throat> where where would you kind of assess them? What are you seeing from them uh, in their early stages of being integrated with the team? I feel like we all have to be strong with the ball, you know, especially the last game. You know, the guards as well were turning it over. So we just got to continue to take care of the ball, uh, continue to not let one mistake lead to two because we weren't able to get back and, and guard the ball. And that's things that, you know, Coach Drew preaches all the time. So we need to continue to implement imp implement that at the end of the day because turnovers are going to happen. Mistakes are going to happen, but we have to get back and we have to guard. Parker, go ahead. Adam, uh, <clears throat> Coach talked about how it was tough to come out of that that hole that you guys kind of dug yourself into because you guys were such a young team. What do you think you learned as a leader of uh, just kind of what you guys need to do moving forward in terms of uh, just kind of leading those younger guys? Uh, I truly don't think it's because of the, you know, the age of us being young. I think at the end of the day, uh, any team, especially in that kind of environment, going to Marquette and playing to such – you know, a fierce role game, you know, you can't be behind like that. You can't put yourself in situations like that. So uh, I continue to, uh, you know, do my job of being vocal and leading out there. Uh, the guys are doing a great job of just learning from our mistakes, learning that at the end of the day, it's a process and we have to be better and we'll continue to fight to be better. So um, all in all, you know, the game, getting that far behind it's, it's just not possible to night in night out win games like that so we got to be better Kendall go ahead uh Adam happy birthday I I know spinning in South Dakota is probably a fun time so <laughs> right. uh wish you well on that front I did want to ask you though defensively kind of looking at those UCLA Virginia and now Marquette games what sticks out to you about maybe where y'all need to improve the most uh we're just not connected out there we don't have each other's backs. Um, you know, we're, we're doing things defensively, pressuring the ball, but we need to know that if we are getting beat, we have the next man that's going to step up and going to help. And then that next man is going to have somebody else have his back. So we just have to be, you know, all on all on the rope and then they all connected out there and just flying around and playing hard. Andrew Miner, go ahead. Yeah, Adam, happy birthday. Um, I guess to build off Parker's question a little bit more, uh, in the past couple of years, you guys have done a really good job of, even if you're getting down down big, uh, like UNC or Oklahoma State, you guys have always fought back and that seemed to be your identity. What, you know, early in the season, how would you evaluate this specific team's identity? Uh, it's, it's definitely, you know, work in progress. We want to be the toughest team on the court and you have to earn that. You have to build like coach um, Jake has said today we have to build day by day uh, to get better and better to where we always can be the toughest team you know we're not there right now but we're going to continue to work and be hard um, so I honestly don't have an answer for the identity I think that it'll come and it'll show you know once we have it because it'll be a force that a lot of people you know will fear and was also curious you guys have a ton of shooters on the team uh, there's always an emphasis of finding the best shot versus just taking a good shot. How do you guys, how are you guys working through that? Uh, just, you know, continue to be aggressive, trusting each other, trusting to make the next pass. Um, you know, we, we may all think that, you know, one shot may be better than the other, but then the day we can worry about that later. We need to be aggressive. We need to have each other's back defensively and, you know, get stops because the more stops we get, the more opportunities we get to shoot the ball. And I know everybody, you know, loves offense as well. So. Sure, thank you. All right, we got time. Got time for one more. Let's go uh, back to Parker. Adam, how much of a wake up call was this past game and kind of looking forward to the rest of the season? Uh, it's an extreme wake up call and I'm I'm hoping that we don't get any more. <laughs> but um yeah, it was it was much needed. And I know that, you know, a lot of people say it's it's early and everything, but regardless of the time and um we need to learn and we need to continue to grow and uh, be better, and we know we can be better. It's just a matter of continuing to apply ourselves day in and day out. So the coaches have done a great job of holding us accountable. You know, 
the guys and leaders as well have done a good job, you know, studying film, doing whatever we can on the court during these few practices to compete at a high level defensively. And uh, like I said, just have each other's back and push each other. So um, we're definitely excited to be able to put a, a better performance out there and just, you know, come up with the win. All right, awesome. Thank you, Adam. Welcome. All right. That's everybody. You guys good? Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Appreciate, Thanks, Matt. That. Thank you. Appreciate it, Matt. Yeah, not Thank a problem. Matt. Thanks. Thanks for rolling with us today. Yeah, okay. no problem. <laughs> See y'all.